Tutorial Tuesday with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft, y'all! I've been seeing these farmhouse tags on Etsy and I wanted a set, but I didn't want to pay $35 or more to get one. So I thought that today we would make some together. We're going to do them two different ways. The first set we're making with wood. I picked this piece up at Hobby Lobby. It's a piece of Baltic birch. It's 36 inches long, eight inches wide, and a quarter inch thick. I found my center and marked it, and then I took my ruler and I made the angled parts to make my tag. I did these at a five inch angle. I'm also going to be using one and a quarter inch washers that I got from Home Depot on the top of my tags. So I laid them out to see where the center would be and I marked that on my board as well. I took my wood outside and I took my little jigsaw and cut along my lines. I love this little jigsaw. It was the first power tool that I actually purchased for myself. It's very lightweight and it's so easy to use and I think I only paid like $21 for it. Once I got my wood cut, I used my little hand sander and went around and smoothed out the edges. The wood did splinter just a little bit when I cut it, but my hand sander took care of all that and it looked great. Now I'm just going to drill a hole in the top of each one of my tags. I put a wood block underneath it so that I didn't drill through to my table. I brought my tags back in the house and gave them a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. I did paint the front, the back, and all the sides. I was asked by one of our subscribers why crafters like chalk paint so much. I can't speak for everyone else, but I like it because you don't have to prepare the surface. It normally covers with one coat and it dries really fast. I want to put the words, welcome to our home on my tags. So I went to my Cricut and designed the way I wanted it to look and cut it out in iron-on vinyl. My sister taught me this little trick about the iron-on vinyl and typically I love it because it looks like you painted it on. This vinyl I think was a little bit old. It didn't want to stick as well, but I just kept playing with it as I took off the plastic and then I used my iron and pressed it back down and it worked just fine. I did mess up the U on our, but that's okay. I just scraped it up. I cut another one and pressed it down and now it looks great. I used a little bit of hot glue to glue my washer over the hole that I drilled. And then I just positioned my tags the way that I wanted them to lay. I took some wood glue for that permanent hold and used a little bit of hot glue for the fast hold. Now I'm just going to take some twine, thread it through my holes, and tie a knot at the top to make a hanger. I want to make a bow for my tags. So I took some black and white check ribbon and I cut off three pieces. Then I just made a loop out of each one and glued the ends together with some hot glue. Once I got my three loops, I pinched them up in the middle and held them in one hand, then took a small piece of black and white check ribbon, wrapped around it several times and tied a knot. Then I just fluffed it up took a little bit of hot glue and glued it down to my side. And there's our tags. I love this piece so much. I really like the way it looks on my door and I'm happy that I didn't have to pay $35 for it. For our second set of tags, we're gonna use this sign that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. I removed the embellishment off the front took off the hanger and removed the staples. Then I found the center of it and marked that for my cut line. Once I got it marked, I took my box cutter and scored it several times on the back. 
I tried to snap it before I scored the front and I ended up with some jagged edges, but that's okay. I flipped it over, scored the front, and it snapped off real easily. Then I just cleaned up those edges. Now I'm going to take the paper off to give it a more finished back. I didn't want to see the crow whenever it got flipped around. Now I'm just finding the center of my sign so that I will know how big I want to make those angle cuts on the side to make my tags. Once I got my marks made, I took my box cutter and I scored it several times on each side and then it just snaps off. Once I got one cut, I laid it on top of the other one and marked it so that they would look the same and did the same thing. I just score it several times and then it snaps off. Now I'm just taking my little hand sander that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I'm smoothing out those edges just to make sure that it doesn't have any ridges on it. I took my washers and laid them out and made the mark where I needed to drill and then I just took my drill and made a hole in the top of each one of my tags. I'm giving these a good coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I made sure that I painted the front, the back, and all the sides. For these signs, instead of using the Cricut, I decided that I would do this by hand. So I want to put Simply Blessed on them. I printed it out on my printer, and then I took my carbon paper, laid it on my sign, put my word over the top of it, and traced around it with my pencil. This transfers it onto my sign. Once it was on there, I just took my black permanent marker and I filled in each one of the words. I could have used paint and a small detail brush to do this, but since my letters were kind of thin, I decided to go ahead and use my permanent marker. I like how it looks and it works a lot faster than using paint and a brush. Hey guys, don't forget that we are really close to our 7,500 subscribers. Once we get there, we're going to be drawing for that Kindle Fire 7. I'll put a card up at the top so that you can go check out what you need to do to get qualified to win. Once I finished my words, I took a little bit of hot glue and I glued down my washers on top of my holes. Now I just lay my signs out the way I want them to be and I used a little bit of hot glue to attach them together. I'm going to take some twine and thread through the top and then make a knot to make a hanger. For this sign, I'm going to use my medium width black and white check ribbon to make a bow. I cut three pieces and I made a little loop and glued the ends together with my hot glue. But this time I decided to stack my loops on top of each other to make my bow. Once I got them stacked, I pinched up the center, took a piece of twine, wrapped around it several times, and tied it into a knot. Now I'm just going to fluff my bow. This ribbon doesn't have wire in it, so it doesn't fluff as easily as the other did. Then I just attach it to my sign with some hot glue. And there's our tags. I really love how these look as well. It doesn't look cheap, and I like how it looks with my gallery wall. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring that bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload five days a week, offering a variety of DIYs, paper crafting, home decor hauls, and craft show information. I'm sure you will find something you will love with Crafting Cousins. Fall is here, and with that is my favorite sport, football. I found these cute little football glasses at the Dollar Tree, and I knew I wanted to make a vase out of one. I took some ivory chalk paint and completely covered the glass. 
I will be painting it brown, but I'm going to use acrylic paint and I was afraid that it wouldn't stick to the glass as well, so I wanted to make sure to give it a base coat of chalk paint. Now I'm going to take some coffee bean acrylic paint and a stiff stencil brush and kind of spounce the paint on. The glass has texture to it and I wanted to highlight that by spouncing on my paint. I didn't want to smooth that out at all. Once I got my brown paint all over my glass, I went back and added in a little black to give it some dimension, and then I just kind of blended the two to give it more of a football look. I took some white chalk paint and a small brush and went over those laces there in the center to cover those really well. Once I finished that, I took a small detail brush and some of my black and brown paint and went around it and just cleaned everything up. I wanted to give my laces a little bit of dimension, so I took a small Sharpie and just kind of gave them a line down the middle. Then I took some black chalk paint and a small detail brush and went around that piece there in the center. I'm not sure what it's called, but I did look at a football online and that is highlighted, so I wanted to highlight mine as well. I'm gonna use this sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and used in another project, and I'm using a cutout from my favorite football team. I wanted to make the cutout pop up off the football, so I took a piece of foam board, traced my cutout around it, and then cut it out with an X-Acto knife. Then I just took a small piece of sandpaper and smoothed out the edges. I took some Mod Podge and put on the foam and on the cutout and attached them together. I used a little bit of hot glue and attached that to my football. I did use a bamboo skewer on the back so that I could put it in my flower arrangement, but my camera died and I didn't get footage of that. All I did was glue it with some hot glue. Now I'm gonna take some fall colored mums that I got from the Dollar Tree and put those in our vase. And then I just add our football. And there's our arrangement. I love this piece. It's really got me in the mood to yell Roll Tide. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope that you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all. We would love to have you tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Tutorial Tuesdays, either Hump Day Hauls or Wednesdays, Trash to Treasure Thursdays, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturdays. See you tomorrow!